Hello everyone, welcome once again to this short tutorials on how to use Bioflow. These the, are informal tutorials and last one I show you how to upload the data and also on how to uh, save your data and retrieve it again. So this time we're going to focus finally on starting to use some of the analytical modules. Uh, to do that, first I'm going to uh, uh, go once again to retrieve an analysis that I already did. Well, in this case, we only save the data. So once again, you go and browse, you upload the data, and then you click on loading the object. If you have not um, saved your data object yet, maybe you just go to retrieve new data, and then you start you know, um, retrieving or uploading your phenotypic data or genotypic or pedigree, et cetera, depending on what do you need. Most of the analysis only require phenotypic data sets. Um, if, and it's only if you need some spe special models like GBLOP or PBLOP, et cetera, that you might want to add some of these other sources of information. For now, let's focus on the QA module. Under the generic evaluation modules, you can find quality assurance. If you want to get a description of what do we mean by generic evaluation, you can actually click on that module, giving you a brief definition on what it is which in this case for us is, you know, dissecting the genetic signal from the phenotypic records to estimate surrogates of genetic value, such as reading values, general combining ability, total genetic value, in order to apply artificial selection and increase the allele frequencies of genes affecting the expression of traits of interest. There is, of course, more details that you can read there and you might learn something new. But for now, let's move and actually start doing the quality assurance for the phenotypic data set that we already uploaded. And if you just wanna try the tool and you don't have phenotypic information, you can always just load the example data set and do the matching as I indicated in the previous videos. Let's go back to the QA module. You will notice that all the analytical modules moving forward, they will have always these three tabs at the top. An information tab that is telling you, you know, what is this module about, uh, some details, or how it works, some references on the methods that you can cite in your research, also some dependencies on the different modules. For example, QA um, allows you to, you know, uh, QA phenotypes, genotypes, or pedigree. You can see that in the left, we have QA, QC for phenotypes, QA, QC for genetic markers, QA, QC for pedigree. So uh, let's start with QA in uh, phenotypic data. And you will notice also that there is two other tabs at the top. Input is uh, really the, the core of feeding the, the analytical modules, the models, etc. You will notice that as I click on input, now there is new tabs that allow me to select the input parameters to the QA. In this case, this specific QA module for phenotypes allows us to um, tag possible outliers for different traits. You will notice that there is two clean uh, or clearly separated sections. One is the gray boxes where I have the input parameters before I run my analysis. But also I have a section right below the input parameters where I can investigate the data with some visualizations. For example, using this IQR coefficient, I can see what would be the plot records that will be tagged as possible outliers and which ones would not be outliers for the trade yield but I can also see it for all the trades that are available. And if I increase, for example, the IQR coefficient, you will notice that less and less records are tagged as outliers because I'm being more uh, relaxed. Or I can be more stringent and more and more data records will be considered outliers. So we have put some rules of thumb there that can help you to do a good cleaning. Uh, and also, you know, we have added some additional uh, plotting um, parameters for you to have a, a, a different view. And of course, all this is just for you to do a good selection of the input parameters. So now maybe once you know what will happen, if you tag certain records using this IQR coefficient, you can decide what should be saved um, in, your, in your data structure moving forward. Now I can select that maybe yield and grain moisture. I'm going to... Um, apply an IQR coefficient, but I'm going to apply something uh, a bit relaxed on 3.5. 
So some records will be taxed, some others will not. And you can see how for the two trades, uh, what will be the end result. Then I can go to run analysis and click the button tag outliers. And that will create a table of modifications that the system will recognize that now there is certain possible outliers for yield and certain possible outliers for gain moisture. And in posterior analysis, I can exclude those, those records from the analysis. So I get this report that I can always just download by clicking on download dashboard. So that is part of the output tabs. And then you can see that I already downloaded an HTML file that I can always go back and open and share with my partners or with everyone that I want to share some of this information to show them what type of QA process I have applied. I hope this is useful uh, for you in, in, in the tutorial. You will notice that as we go in different modules, there will be different input parameters uh, and different output tabs. Um, you can see that when I finish this analysis, what I receive is an ID for this analysis that is called with the date and time of the analysis. And it's telling me that I now, now I can move and proceed to perform the single trial analysis, which I will do in the next video. For now, I hope this was uh, informative. All the modules will have this structure. If you have any questions, like I said before, just go to home, go to the About Us section, and then just contact us by clicking on the support desk under Contact and Development. Well, happy uh, day and good luck with your analysis.